Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Daniel Rowe. Daniel, thank you so much for taking some time to join us. It is a pleasure to be here, Jason. Thank you for having me. Of course, of course. I am uh, I'm just super pumped because I feel like this is an episode that I've been asked about a lot, right? Like we, well, we get a lot of questions about Nux. I think there was a huge amount of anticipation for Nux 3. Everybody's so excited that it's live. I cannot wait to learn more about it. But before we talk about Nux, let's talk a little bit about you. Um, for folks who aren't familiar with your work, do you want to give us a bit of a background? Uh, sure. I'm... I'm on the, the team of, of Nux, which I guess <laughs> probably um, goes without saying. And before that, I had a small software as a service startup that was uh, providing resources for working parents. Oh, um, cool. and, that, that, and before that, I was in agency world. So um, again, a small digital agency um, working on, uh, focusing actually on communication at first uh, and mm. figuring out what was, what was most important important to communicate and get across. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, could, I could go back further and further and further, but uh, I guess I could say I'm, I'm self-taught. I've always loved uh, coding, um, uh, but, but this most recent um, foray into open source is, is actually relatively uh, short. You can look at my GitHub contributions and, and see it sort of peters out about a couple of years ago. So uh, it's, it's uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a, a pleasure. Uh, to be doing what I'm doing at the moment, but yeah, uh, you might sure. not have known, you might not have known that I would do it if you were to, to peek at my life five ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean that's that's fascinating. the The journey is always really fun um, because it's never the same. You know, nobody that I've spoken to in open source has exactly the same path into it. And I'm curious because one of the main things that I hear when you talk to a lot of open source contributors is that it is a challenging place to be right? That, that being an open source contributor is, you know, you'll, it's kind of a fire hose. Like a lot of people use the software, especially something successful like Nuxt, where you're going to get a ton of issues, a ton of feature requests, um, always more than, than one person or, or even a small team really has the bandwidth to handle. How, how has that experience been for you? Like what's, what's your experience of being the, uh, you know, a framework architect on, on Nuxt? So um, I can I just say, by the way, your backdrop is mesmerizing. Just sort of the, sort of the colors changing. I, you know, and if, if I at any point slip into a trance or something like that, 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 that will be what it is. Um, I, I, I think the, uh, the, um, it helps that the next community is so nice. Hmm. So um, I, I know what you mean about, about the firehose concept. So there are lots of avenues for people to get in contact, which I actually appreciate. Um, so I, I'm, I'm reachable, for example, on Discord and uh, Twitter. And then there's obviously GitHub issues uh, and discussions, not just for the um, Nux3 repo, but the other one. And you could pick um, all the module repositories, um, mm -hmm. ESLint config. There's lots and lots of, of, of opportunity for people to get in contact and equally opportunity for, for um, important issues to come through. So I think the Nux community, though, is really appreciative. So they say thank you. There's a lot of love. Um, and I, don't, I, I, think I wouldn't be surprised if this is true for other open source maintainers as well. But one of the key things for me in open source is this is about giving out to mm. people. So just as I also have received from other people. So I, it feels like a, a tremendously rewarding experience. I'm, I'm giving, I'm helping people. I sometimes give the opportunity to help in a more sort of one-to-one -one, um, basis. Sometimes it's, it's on an um, issue level or a feature level. And that is so satisfying, honestly. Um, and so having that sort of that people saying thank you and appreciating what's mm. being done honestly makes all the difference. Obviously, there's, there's always the um, the the individual uh, person or, or issue that that, that is um, um, not not quite so nice and and, and f for that it really helps having a team um, yeah, yeah. who can give you a bit of support when you when you in, encounter that um, I, I think I think probably because open source is people focused at least for me um, it's an opportunity for great 
reward and also hurt uh, as well. But but that's not really primarily in any way what I experience. Sure, sure. No, that's yeah. I think and and it's a good reminder to all of us that you know. For a lot of folks, the only feedback they hear is when somebody's frustrated. And so to take the time, like it sounds like the view community does to say thank you, to shout out the maintainers, to, you know, like share the good times that things are working, that you're happy, that you love the software. That is the sort of thing that helps make sure that the folks building this stuff stay right. If they hear more good than bad, it's easier to stick around and keep doing it. Um, so yeah, I think that is, uh, that's, I mean, that's wonderful. That's very, that makes me happy to hear that, that the view community has done so well. I, you know, I was talking about this the other day, we did a, like a state of JS survey results, um, recap. And one of the things that I was thinking about is how there's this sort of, um, this like hype cycle that happens with a lot of languages where they, they kind of explode out of nowhere into prominence and then everybody uses it and then it becomes the, the de facto tool. And then it sort of becomes a thing people have to use. So then they get frustrated and then they're, they're like grumpy about having to use it. And we've seen this over and over again, you know, jQuery did it, Webpack did it, React starting to do it. And I was commenting on the fact that it feels like Vue sort of skipped that hype cycle and went straight to having a dedicated healthy community where Vue is just sort of slow and steady grown. It's got a huge user base, a hugely active community, a wonderful ecosystem. And it feels to me like the folks who are there are there because it's where they want to be. It's what they want to work with. And you just don't have that sort of like people were dragged kicking and screaming into the view community against their will that you maybe feel when, when you see folks talk about like, you know, the, the way that the every bedraggled react developer will, will kind of like you they have a, you can see, they feel some kind of way about redux. Right. And it doesn't matter how much work Mark Erickson is doing to make redux actually kind of delightful. Like if you haven't used the modern Redux tools, please do. It's wonderful. Um, but you can tell that like a lot of people feel like they, that Redux was thrust upon them and they have to deal with it. And, oh, if only woe is me, you know? Um, but I've, I haven't seen that similar sort of like, like, oh God, I have to use Vue. You know, it just doesn't seem to happen as often. Is that true on the inside of the community as well? Or is that just my kind of rose colored glasses looking in? I think that's a fair fair thing to say. So I think the the biggest moment of a sort of dissatisfaction in the community was over was really when the composition API was introduced. Mm. I think it must be a, a couple of years ago now. Um, and the uh, I think a lot of it was was worry and concern about what was going to happen. Now, the majority of Vue developers not only use the Composition API, but actually use the script setup um, syntax as well, which goes mm. with it. That, that was a moment where there was a sense of saltiness, where people were unhappy. But no, I think, I think you're right. The Vue community is a smaller community than the React community. That helps in terms of keeping that, that closeness. It's also a very international community. Um, which is a uh, which is a huge strength. Um, Absolutely, and 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 certainly also probably means we need to we we, we have to work quite uh, uh, hard at making sure that we are communicating well, mm -hmm. um, and which is true. I think whenever you have any kind of distributed team, I think yeah. I think you do see it in in Vue though the sort of feeling like we're a community. We look out for each other. Um, Vue has has had fewer options. Um, like fewer anointed options, uh, yeah. like for the view router was the the way, view X was the way. Um, and I think that probably made a little bit of a difference as well in terms of thinking about how an ecosystem feels. Uh, so rather than picking um, picking lots, lots of, of different options, um, you were a little bit more guided uh, in, in view and in terms of, of what, what you would what you were building with and also what the other people you were talking to were building with. So again, less opportunity for uh, holy wars um, of uh, one tool versus another tool. Uh, things are a little bit, little more uh, open at the moment. Obviously um, with Vue 3, there was then a uh, rethinking of store, not just mm -hmm. to pick uh, on your Redux example. So Vuex 
uh, had its its own release, plans for another release. Then another store came along called Pinia, which is was then um, adopted by the community and actually adopted by the Viewcore team as well. So that's now the official uh, store solution. But there are others too, like Harlem. So the ecosystem is a little bit more diverse, I think, in the in View Three, and we see that even in the Nuxt ecosystem too. There are often several different solutions for any given uh, task, and uh, and so that's that, that's interesting. But it's, it's it's not creating, it's not getting rid of the the uh, the warmth and the the closeness of the community. So yeah, I might be wrong. Might be wrong about the the the, the number of different tools uh, affecting or causing causing something different there. For sure, yeah. Um, well, so, and, and I mean that that does feel to me like that that has been a point of contention is the the sort of lack of guidance because then what happens is if you you know if you look at the React community for example there wasn't an official recommendation on how to do things and that led to people who weren't part of the React core team becoming the official spokesman of of how things should or shouldn't be done. Um, and that often led to tension, like we've seen that where, you know, a recommendation would get made. And then there's this sort of Twitter cycle of everybody saying like, no, 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 not actually like that. No, it needs to be like this instead. And then you're not sure who's correct because nobody's correct because it's just a community sort of self-governing. And that's that's sort of the way. Right. Um, but it it has led to, yeah, pretty heavy fracturing. Like you've got folks who are like always Redux, folks who are never Redux, folks who are always what, you know, whatever tool they love. Um, I'm going to take a quick aside here. I, I know everybody that you're seeing the green flicker on my, my camera. I have ordered the cable to correct this, but I can't do anything about it until that cable shows up. So hopefully by next episode, that, that flicker will be gone. Uh, I apologize. <laughs> you mean, you mean you're not actually, it's not a CGI thing. You know, this is a computer generated <laughs> Jason. Yes. That's uh, uh, the, the real green Jason green has been on a beach somewhere for years. I am an AI. <laughs> Uh, you know, um, but so, okay. So, so maybe to, to switch from like all the love in the, the view community, I'm going to ask what's maybe a controversial question, but it, it feels like some of the grumbling that I heard was that Nux three took a really long time to get to stable and that that potentially, uh, hurt its ability to grow and gain adoption because view three was out for a long time before Nux3 was out, which made it, you, people wanted to use the View 3 stuff, but they couldn't yet because it wasn't working in Nux3. Um, do you do you feel that that's true? Or is that sort of, again, like me from the outside hearing like the, the, the loudest minority instead of hearing what was actually going on in the community? So I think, I know, I think you're absolutely right. So Nux3 was a long, a long time in coming. And that... That, I mean, I can give you a sort of a reason why, like I, I, we could sort of explore a little bit about why that might have been. Um, it was, I'm sure it was really frustrating for people uh, in the community. It was very frustrating for me as well <laughs> on the team. Um, and and, I, and I, that's not just me. It would be the whole team would have been frustrated by that. So that wasn't, that wasn't great. Uh, and, and probably the experience of waiting, waiting so long for that, uh, you know, I, I I can't imagine that was a pleasant experience. Um, we really very much, probably pretty much top priority, never want that to happen again. Um, so so we we don't the upgrade to Nux four when that happens is not going to be the same kind of thing. The delay is not going to be uh, nearly as long ever. Mm, um, gotcha. So we, we we really are are taking some lessons on board from that. Having said that, I was really, really pleased in the state of JS server that just came out to see that Nux users are still really positive about the framework in terms of thinking about their retention rates, even, even given the really long delay to Nux 3's release. So, I mean, that was that was that was gratifying. Yeah. But um, yeah, no, I I I bet it was frustrating. Well, and and we have to assume you know, this was, this was worth the wait, right? So a lot of good stuff showed up in the Nux 3 stable release. Um, and a few of them I understand, and a few of them I'm going to have to ask you a lot of questions about. So uh, the ones that I understand is that Nux 3 is now TypeScript by default or TypeScript capable? So well, that's an interesting question. So Nux is written in TypeScript. 
Okay. And it is uh, so so it, all of the Nuxt utilities will be typed, but Wonderful. we go quite a bit beyond that in terms of. Um, so of, of course, users can write code in TypeScript and uh, or JavaScript. Uh, they they don't have to use TypeScript, but we we do a lot with TypeScript. So we generate a um, lots and lots of types uh, in a in the .nuxt folder. This sort of build directory that shouldn't be checked into CI in into source control. Mm -hmm. um, and those uh, declaration files tell the editor that you're using a lot about your project. So I think we're really um, TypeScript first in terms of developer experience, but that really doesn't mean people need to themselves use TypeScript. It, it, it will power their editors um, inference and autocomplete whatever um, their own coding style preference is. But, it, it, but in terms of if, you, if, you're, if you're looking for a spectrum of zero to 100 on how TypeScript powered is Nuxt, we are probably at, uh, pushing towards the 100 end of the scale. <laughs> Great, great. Um, the other one that I saw is that you are now using Vite under the hood. Um, how does that impact the experience of, of working with Nuxt? Interestingly, and it's just worth saying, saying this one thing uh, before I, I go on to um, say how amazing Vite is, but, uh, but we, you can actually use Webpack as well. So oh, Nuxt okay. is bundler agnostic. Uh, so as long as you have mm. a bundle function, you, you can have any bundler that exports a bundler function. And we, we have two first party, we have Webpack, uh, a Webpack builder and a Vite builder, and you can use either one. Um, but Nux ships with a Vite builder. You have to install the Webpack one separately if you want it. And really, um, I think people are most excited about that Vite. Um, Vite is, is really amazing. I mean, if you have a look at um, at the experience of using Vite, um, that's pretty, pretty cool. I think that was what drove adoption first. But what I am most excited about Vite at the moment is the ecosystem for Vite. So ju just as Nux has its own ecosystem that I love and that makes Nux powerful, Vite's ecosystem, I think, really has driven, driven adoption uh, of it as a framework. So it's just a delight to extend as a library author. And then the idea that you can write something. So I, I wrote a, um, a library I've written a couple of libraries that do this that basically can run in uh, any um, framework that, that uses Vite. So the mm -hmm. library I'm talking about is Fontaine. It, it provides um, sort of it uses font metrics to provide uh, fallback fonts uh, when web when web fonts are loading. So it, it it uses the metrics to adjust your own system fonts so that there isn't uh, as big a layout shift as there otherwise would be. So it's um, kind of uh, random thing, um, yeah. but the fact is that the Vite plugin that that module exports can be used in any you know to use it in Laravel is straightforward. To oh, adopt it cool. in Solid is totally possible, you know, and so that that means I think that's I think that's great, and and that's the kind of thing that that Vite really enables quite well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is that's really really cool. Um... And then let's see what what else is new. Uh, so the the big one I think is one that I don't know much about. So I'm really interested to hear. Uh, there's something called Nitro happening in Nux three. So can you talk a little bit about what Nitro is and and what it's enabling for devs? Absolutely. So Nitro is the server rendering framework for Nux three. Uh, Got so. It. If you think about a, a front-end application um, running in the browser, uh, it, 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 that, that's going to have a bundle. Uh, it's going to have its CSS and JavaScript. Um, when you render that on a server, you have to have a server framework for it. It's going to process the incoming request uh, and return the response. Um, and Nux2 had that. Um, it had a framework based on Connect that was wrapped around the, um, uh, well, there was a client bundle and there was a server bundle for the view application and the the um, nux server basically would run uh, a request into that into that server bundle uh, and get a string of html back and it would do a few other things around that html wrap them up in some more um some more template and um add you know csp mm -hmm. uh, there, there was lots of other things it would do and, and send it back and there was there was um uh, an api you could add your own api routes as part of that server as long as they were connect compatible um, Nux3 really takes that to an entirely new level because Nitro is um, 
it's oh, what, where do I start? So it's it's designed to be universal, to be deployed anywhere. So it can be deployed to Dino Deploy, Cloudflare Workers, um, Versal, uh, Netlify, both are zero config. You can deploy deploy also to Versal Edge or Netlify Edge. Uh, you can deploy deploy to um, AWS, Lambda, or um, Edgeo, or I, I just the aim is anywhere. Um, and is with a zero config as possible. Um, it's also really, we aim to make it much, much more intuitive in terms of how it works. So rather than a lot of boilerplate in terms of uh, writing these handlers, you can you can write just in terms of thinking about a function call. So you, you can just directly return the data or object that that, that endpoint returns. Um, we, we also have a, a another um, solution agnostic uh, storage layer. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it key value store that can work with everything from the file system to Cloudflare, KV, to Redis, to memory cache, uh, or, or whatever. That it, and it, it supports really cool things like taking snapshots of data. So we can um, take fill the cache, fill the data in uh, the pre-rendering stage, and then, uh, then sort of use that in production. Um, which is very very helpful if you're if you're building an app. Um, Nitro is also a really really uh, not not one thing. So it, it's hybrid first. So you can have some routes that are static and or some that are pre-rendered. Mm. You can have some that are um, SWR and have a sort of uh, every sixty seconds they get, get revalidated um, in the background. Um, you can have some that are um, fully dynamic. Um, it's it's really really powerful, uh, and it it basically makes Nuxt much more a full stack framework than it than it was before. Before it was that there was a server that you could use, but really you'd be better off using a, another another server framework um, if you really had to do anything serious. With Nuxt three, that's 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 different. And Nitro, I should say, is is open sourced and separate. We pulled it out hmm. of Nuxt. Um, kicking and screaming, and released it as its own package in its own GitHub org, so anyone can use it. And there's already an Angular project that's using Nitro to power their own server rendering, um, which is a delight. Um, the, and I, I think there might even be a remix one too. I'm not quite oh, sure about fascinating. that. Fascinating. So, and, and so this I, is. I mean. The, 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 I love that you said kicking and screaming. So I imagine this was not a. Uh, not one of those like ah yes we'll just we'll just move this code over here. <laughs> well, we we built it to be extractable from the beginning. So okay. the first uh, instance of Nitro was as a module um, that was so most things can be built into Next by means of modules. It's sure. uh, really sensible that way. Um, but we f we first built it as a module and then we integrated it much more closely um, and. The danger with that, even if you keep it as a separate package in a monorepo, which is what we did, that the solutions to problems or the API ends up slightly merging. So, for example, maybe we need to transpile certain packages as part of Nuxt. Um, mm -hmm. And we just add, it's easy to add that to the Nitro config. So you can, you can have a sort of bleed over where it's just expecting to be used by Nuxt. So pulling it out was a slightly more complex thing. And I, if I recall correctly, I think we actually had sort of a separate repository what, and also still one within Nuxt. Um, mm. And so we sort of had two parallel implementations for a little while until we actually fully pulled it out. Gotcha. Um, but, you know, we, 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 we did it. And it, 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 it is independent. I think that does help us... Um, you know, we we don't want Nitro Pack needs to be its its own own thing. It's not mm. just driven by Nuxt. It needs to be usable for the rest of the ecosystem too. No, there are people, plenty of people using it, who aren't using using Nuxt. So, gotcha. All but, right. So at, at this point, I um I mind I want to be mindful of the fact that I'm not super strong with Vue, and I don't want that to prevent us from getting things done. So I want to give us a little more time to work on uh, on actual coding. So from here, I'm going to bounce us over into our pair programming view and uh, start off by saying this episode, like every episode, is live captioned. We've got the closed caption button right on the Twitch player if you want to follow along. 
Um, or if you look at the homepage of the site, we've got the whole uh, whole transcript here. That is being done by Maggie at White Coat Captioning today. Thank you so much, Maggie, for being here. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, NX, New Relic, and brand new, haven't added the logo yet, Plural site. So thank you all so much for kicking in to make this show more accessible to more people. It means a lot to me. Um, we are talking today to Daniel. Uh, make sure you go and follow Daniel on Twitter for all of your Nuxt and what? Nuxt? Oh, you're building. Oh, that's right. You're building a Elk Zone, which is the um, this really good. I love this, actually. It's so, it's so nice to use. Um, if you go into Elk Zone. It's got your whole, like, it's a Twitter-like Mastodon client, which is wonderful. I forgot you were working on that. Yeah, this this is very, very cool. Um, if you're using Mastodon, go check it out. It's awesome. Um, okay. And, and, and check out today. Mastodon. Say again? And check out Mastodon as well. Oh, yeah, check out Mastodon. Um, what's the right place to go for Mastodon? Is it dot .social? What's the, what's the hub? I think joinmastodon.org is the Join website Mastodon. of okay, Mastodon itself. We All right. So we're going to drop Mastodon. Um, go, yeah, go check out Mastodon. It is, it is a surprisingly cozy place. I've, I've really enjoyed the conversations I've had on there. Um, and the, the tone is very like builders, helping builders, people being supportive, um, a little less of the, the random drama that you see on, on Twitter. You can ask questions with a little less likelihood of somebody floating in and telling you why it's wrong that you exist in the first place. Um, all right, so we're talking about Nuxt. Did I drop a Nuxt link? I don't think I did. And yep. here we go. So this is Nuxt, and I am at the end of my knowledge. What should I do first if I want to, <laughs> uh, to build a Nuxt project? So um, this is a, a great, this is, this is the central place to start. Um, but I can give you a, an even uh, quicker way to get going, and that's to go to nuxt.new. Nuxt.new. Uh, so this is, uh, actually, this is a, a Nuxt website without any JavaScript. Um, so uh, that's a lesser known use of Nuxt. But basically, uh, this will tell you the shortcut to start. And that uh, command there, um, uh, you can click it, I think, to copy it. Um, this one here? That one, that one. That will okay. start you a new Next project if you run that in your, your terminal. Um, right. I mean, you can replace uh, app with the name of your app. Let's see, Next 3 Nitro. Go for it. All right, here we go. Uh-oh, fetch API. That oh, is uh, a just... node a node warning. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. We're good with that. So I'm going to go into Nux3 Nitro, and we've got the basics of a project here. Um, let's see. Is it going to yell at me for not having a... Oh, no. We're okay. Nope, it is. I'm going to close this real quick. I'm going to get init, and then I'm going to open it again. Nope. And now it'll, it won't all be grayed out on us. Uh, okay. So... Um, starting in the readme, we've got kind of the, here's a link to the docs. We've got basic setup, always very nice. Um, how to run a dev server and how to build for production. Wonderful. So I'm going to come back out here. Uh, I still use NPM. So we'll run that install here. Where, uh, what's the right way to kind of familiarize yourself if you're not super familiar with, with Nuxt, um, to get your head around, like, where things live, where you should write your code, what the, you know, how, how you would extend it if you want to do more. So um, the best way is to dive into the docs. I, I can tell you to, to start what, what, what you have in that folder. But if you're wanting to know more generally how to um, get going, if you go back to nuxta.com okay. uh, and click docs, Oh, sorry. Um, and then you click, uh, let's see, I think API. API? Uh, well, no, guide. I think guide is probably the place to start. Guide. You'll see on the left-hand side, directory structure. Um, I mean, obviously, the rest of the docs, uh -huh. you, can, you can read through. If you click get started, it will take you through. But the directory structure is a very helpful, helpful piece of the docs. And I recommend, that's why I'm mentioning it here specifically, because you can see all the different folders that you might, all the different 
special folders that you might mm -hmm. have as part of a Nuxt project or the special files. It will tell you what they do um, and how to make best use of them. So that is a helpful place. I gotta so, say, Nuxt this, would... I've never seen this in docs before and I love this. Like this is such a clever way to approach it because when I first open up a project, I'm always looking at the the directories and sometimes it's hard to know which ones are are magic, which ones are, you know, the template author kind of organizing their files, which things are, you know, what basically what how does everything fit in here? And so to be able to say, okay, my my project has a layouts folder, what is this for? And you just have kind of given me the names of the directory so that I can go look. And then I assume that based on this, if I see a different directory name, I can safely assume that that was a preference of the person building the template and not something that I have to worry about. Like I can change things, move it and not worry. Exactly. And honestly, uh, actually most of these uh, can be customized too, okay. if you really want a custom. Um, but yes, this is, this is what Nux ships with and this is what most Nux projects would have. Yes. Um, and I think, Person, I, I realize this isn't isn't for everyone, but I, I personally prefer the minimal um, starting project um, because you can quickly and it looks like that's what we got here. What you've got here is very minimal, um, so you, you can get a hold of what is there mm -hmm. um, without necessarily thinking, oh, what what do all of these files have to do and have to to go through everything. So this minimal project is going to come with your package JSON, which has only one dev dependency, which is Nux um, itself. Um, whether you have it in dev or um, production dependencies is, is up to you. This package JSON won't be used in production. This is okay. only for development. Um, Nuxt, uh, will app.view is your, your view entry point. So the, mm -hmm. the client side piece of your app and everything else comes from here. So if you need to do something top level um, in your uh, view application, you do mm -hmm. it in this file and that is probably quite similar to most view applications. So they'll have an app.view file. It tends to be the, the convention. Um, and so if you were to start your Nux server now, um, then you would see the contents of this file in the browser. Um, if you want to, uh, yeah, go ahead and, and install the, the recommended uh, extensions. Uh, Volar is definitely um, what we would recommend that powers all kinds of cool type things within view files. Um, and I don't know if you'll need to reload or not. Can you hover over next welcome? Is that Let me doing anything close and for you? Open to see if that causes it to. Yeah. It's like it turned I... off everything. Oh, well, let's try um, running a dev server and seeing if uh, it, that helps at all. Oh, wait, ah, some, something's oh, happening. It's awesome. It, it, um, it basically, uh, basically it, uh, it runs a post install command to create the type defs for your editor so that your editor will be aware of, of things like what next welcome is and what props it accepts. Um, and do you have Vita installed? Uh... You might, from a previous time when you used Vue, um, this is telling you, um, I would recommend that you disable Vita. They are um, two different plugins that do different things. So, uh, they do the same thing, so best to have only one enabled. Ah, Although it I looks understand. like there is a Lola plugin for, for Vita. Okay, well that's okay because I wasn't using it and I didn't know I had it. <laughs> so here we go. I have oh. uh, I've got this here. Um, it does look like it does look like it's, it's doing now. some stuff. So we've got our types. Yeah, and it shows um, us. That's not. Go ahead. Yeah, and that particular type isn't going to tell you a great deal uh, there. Mm -hmm. That's that's the type of a component, basically, in Vue. Gotcha. Um, if you were to start typing after it, um, so the next one, welcome, if you do space uh, and maybe a, a colon uh, to do a, a data binding, it's actually going to show you the props of the component. So it's got stuff like title and version. Um, mm -hmm. Honestly, um, this next welcome component isn't really for people to use, but it, it does have some props uh, and it is uh, swift. Um, it's, it's quite nice. Yeah. So next welcome is, is auto imported into your project, like most components that you'll use in a next project. So you don't have to explicitly okay. write the import. Your editor is aware that it's available 
And when you do use it in your Nuxt uh, pages or components, Nuxt mm -hmm. will generate an import statement there for you. So it will be, it will be, it, these things are not actually globally registered. They are still imported directly, but Nuxt does it based on usage. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and I'm assuming since this isn't really for general consumption, um, I can I can sort of delete this. That feels well, like there's there's a lot of. Sorry, go ahead. It's beautiful though. You should keep All right, it. Let's, let's take a look. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it up. So I'm gonna npm run dev. And it has started my server. So I'm gonna grab this and we'll head out here. There you go. Ooh, that is. Beautiful. You've seen look it now. That gradient. Look at that gradient. Um, no, this is great. Ooh, ooh, nicely done. Um, so this is wonderful. So, so this is sort of like the built-in welcome and that part is magical. Like this is, I assume coming from the Nux package. So if I delete this and I change it to instead like hello chat and come back out, then we have a, a plain old page. And if I look under the hood, it looks like we've got our, our div. And so not a lot happening that I didn't explicitly put there, which I very much appreciate in a, uh, in a, a framework. Okay, so what should I do next year? So, uh, well, what do you want to build? So the, so the, there's a great, are you gonna have... th there's a great question from Imanox here about loading some data. And now I have this, uh, this API that we can use, um, which we can go API v2, and then we'll grab episodes. And this will give us every episode, or we can switch it out for like the schedule, whoops, uh, and get a shorter list. Um, so we would be able to then kind of use this to build out a little listing of things. And we'd be able to answer Imanox's question, which is what's the best way to load data in a page? Right. Okay. Well, um, let's uh, display that in this app.view. Okay. Um, one thing that you're probably going to want to do, incidentally, as you build a bigger application is have some routing. So you might want to have um, different pages, different URLs go to different things. At the moment, um, you just have one app.view, which is rendering every request to your application. Mm -hmm. um, so, which is fine. Maybe maybe that's what you want. Um, and Nuxt ships with a, a minimal universal router that will allow you to do things like access the location through use route. And you could conditionally display different things based on changes to that route object. Okay. Um, even just in an app.view file. But most people are going to want to, to enable routing. Okay. Um, but we, we can we can come to that in a moment. We can first have a look at how we're going to handle the API call here, maybe. Um, so if you type um, at the bottom, uh, if you open a script tag, uh, and, and instead of just making it a script, uh, add the second word setup after script. So it's just script setup. And you can also okay. add lang ts if you, if you want. Um, that might enable some uh, more, more type support. Um, it shouldn't change what you need to code. Lang equals, yeah, quotes, uh, TS. And uh, there we go. Okay, so we want to display some data from that URL. Nux ships with some composables that let you uh, uh, do asynchronous, um, sort of do asynchronous, asynchronous data fetching on the server mm -hmm. and still have access to that data on the client without needing to reload it. Okay. Uh, so to start with, the way that you would fetch a, from a URL in Nuxt is you use a helper called dollar sign fetch. So you can say const data equals await dollar sign fetch, uh, and then just paste your URL in. Uh, now what that is going to do, uh, it is going to actually fetch it on both server and client. So I'll, sh I'll show you how to use a Nuxt composable to prevent that from happening. Okay. But basically, the dollar sign fetch, which you'll use throughout your app, in maybe handler functions everywhere mm -hmm. where you're um, calling it on user interaction. Um, that is going to, that automatically passes JSON responses and returns you directly the data. So you don't okay. have to um, uh, call the JSON method and then await that, for example. Um, uh, so you could just display that in your template and maybe you might, you could, you could try that. 
if you sure. want to. Yeah, let's let's do that to start. So I'm I'll just do like a a standard pre-tag here and I would want to JSON stringify and then can I just use data straight up or do I have to export it or something? Um, actually, uh, you don't even have to stringify it if you don't want to. You can just, I think it will do that automatically. If you just oh. um, put data in there um, and uh, just one more pair of curly braces uh, around data. Um, this is the, the weird thing for, for Vue if you are coming from JSX world. So um, yes, the two curly braces, and it's not an object; it's just uh, a template. Um, template. Got it. String. Effectively. So this is. Uh, so if you is, save... is this mustache is the syntax? Is that right? Yeah, I think that is that is what it it looks like exactly. So I think okay. if you were to uh, just save that, that should work. So everything in the um, wow. in script setup that is used in the template is exposed automatically to it. And everything in script setup that's not used in the template is not going to be exposed. So there's some magic done by the view compiler there to make sure that you, um, uh, uh, that, that, that things work. Because okay. script setup is basically shortcut, a shortcut for export default component object. And then inside that object, having a method called setup. And inside that setup method, uh, doing whatever you're doing in this script setup block, and then returning from that function the things that will be needed in the template. But that was a lot of boilerplate. And the script setup block is absolutely a brilliant um, improvement on that developer experience. Um, yeah, so, I mean, this um, is the, it, it definitely is one of those things that will take a little bit of. of you know, you have to build a mental model around this because there's a little bit of magic, right? Like this showing mm -hmm. up here is great. I would have expected that I'd have to kind of export an object of, of what's used, but you're just abstracting that away. Anything that gets used is being included and anything that doesn't get used, I assume, just kind of gets discarded as part of the, the bundling process. So I think it will probably still... It depends on whether or not it's um, rollup thinks it's a uh, it, it's something with side effects um, probably. Gotcha. Okay, I gotcha. Um, it, in in this case, if you were to um, so maybe you had have a, a lint rule that um, tells you if you have an unused variable. Mm -hmm. If you comment out that pre data block there, um, you should. Oh yeah, you could also do it this way. If you if you if you um, put that there, uh, your editor and, and indeed um, your linter or your type checker will know that it's not being used. So it's not like you're just having to sort of track what's in the template. It, mm -hmm. it behaves very much as though the template is part of your code. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so let's refactor that statement to, to because if you, if you have a look in your browser's dev tools and you reload the page, you should see that there is an XHR request um, happening um, on client side as well. So it's going to be hitting your, should be hitting your API. Oh, and it looks like I've got some, some, kind of... some, I haven't set up like cores on the, the schedule, which uh, I should have. So that's, uh, that's a good thing to know that I've done. Um, well, it will actually be fine in this case because we, are, we can render it on the server. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, uh, okay, so if we go back into the, the, the editor, let's get rid of that request entirely on the server side. So replace dollar sign fetch, which uh, you can probably, uh, you can copy the entire line because it's going to mostly stay the same. And okay. replace dollar sign fetch with use fetch. Great. And then um, you can put curly braces around data because the object that use fetch returns, uh, sorry, uh, the one in script setup, um, because the object that use oh fetch returns is uh, has several things. It has data. It has an error um, thing, which will have um, the, an error if there has been one. It has a pending um, property, which will tell you again whether the request is running. It's got more as well. You can re-execute the request. Um, so this should work in exactly the same way. So if you go back to the browser and refresh that, it should also run, but there should be no client-side uh, data fetch. Um, and right. you should be able yep. to see, um, if you look in the HTML, that that is because this data object, in this case, um, it's there twice because we've actually outputted it directly in the template. But it's also in this uh, script tag at the bottom. We have this window.nuxt object, mm -hmm. which has a payload. 
and that payload will include everything that needs to be passed from the server render to the client side. Um, and that, in that case, um, uh, in that case, um, you see it there. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, now, let's. Uh, so probably. Let's, we can probably go ahead and and clean this up just a little bit to to show the difference. So if I want to, instead of just dumping the data, uh, we want to set up a loop. Which let's see if I remember. It's v four. That's absolutely right. So what do, what do we want it to be like a, a like an article, an article. right? Yeah, so you'll do, uh, yeah, and it whatever, would be like, um, like event or data as uh, episode or something. In. I think uh, the other way around, you'll do like episode in data. Oh, episode in data. Okay, episode in data. And then um, I'll close my article back here. And then I can do like an H2 and we would want the episode must, must title. Ask. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay. And then I want, uh, we'll do a, a episode dot description. Is that what it is? Description. Um, yeah. And then we will do a, a link. Ooh, this is one that I need to remember. I need to set the attribute, which means I need to bind it. Is it like yeah, this? Which... And then I Perfect. put in exactly. episode dot, uh, dot URI. And we would say beautiful. You, you, you were misleading me. You were like, uh, "Oh, my view is terrible." But clearly, clearly <laughs> it has been it has been a minute. Um, no, this is great. Okay, so good. We got it. We got it moving. It's uh, it's it's moving. And then right now, if we click, it would go through to the episode itself. Um, but I want to change that. Actually, I want this to be instead. Let's go to a. The slug. Okay, so now I need to. Now I am going to need your help because I need to kind of form a string here, where what I want is yeah. to do like uh, I want to do some routing. So let's create maybe like slash episode slash slug, and then we'll be able to look that up from the API. Okay, so make it a template. Uh, make a template string. Um, uh, you'll still need the quotes. I'm sorry, it's weird. You'll need the quotes on either side of it. Um, but yes, now oh. you can then just use this as a normal JavaScript template literals exactly um so yeah. that uh if you render that should look exactly as you're expecting um yep now in this case because you're going to want this is should be a client side uh um, um like a spa you want to click the link and not reload the page you can replace the a with nuxt link okay exactly got it why are you and unhappy? that should um, it's unhappy because the data coming back from use fetch isn't typed. Oh. We don't know the, the type of the um, of the response. Now we can make it happy in a couple of ways. I think you could remove lang ts, um, and it would probably no longer complain. Sure. Um, you could also uh, type it. Um, yeah. What if what if we just do kind of like a a cheap? Or wait, hold on. I got I got yelled at for this. Is it always interface <laughs> or always? Yeah, okay. Um, so we can do a title as a string. We can do the description as a string. And we're using the slug, so that's also a string. Um, and then I, I need to stick this in here somewhere. And Yeah, I, I totally love Zod, by the way. If you haven't used it, um, you probably have. I'm sure you have. I actually um, but it have is... not. I need somebody to come on and teach me. Do you, do you want to use it? Sure, let's like, do it. It's about the syntax is just like about as long as writing that interface. If you install Zod, just npm i Zod. I'm afraid that Nux doesn't install it for you, but okay. Uh, oh, nice. And then restart the server, um, and then in here you just uh, import Z from Zod, um, and uh, that's uh, like again curly braces named named export. Got it. Uh, and then what you do is say like const episode equals. And do you do it like capitalize like that? Um, whatever you you like, uh, and then just do like z dot object. Okay. Uh, and then pass it an object in. Say um, title is z dot string. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, exactly. 
Okay. Now, um, there are two. There, so th th there are two ways. Just before we go much further with Zod, how you would have typed the use fetch to be the type that you you had created is you would simply add a generic after use fetch. So if you had added um, two angle like brackets that. there and basically exactly and made it like that would that would be perfect. That would do it. That would type the data, except that now we don't have um, mm -hmm. a type called episode anymore. But in this particular case, we want to do two things. So one, I think we only care about those three properties. So we really shouldn't be passing the entire API response to the client. Mm. We only want to pass those ones. So um, it, for this, uh, there, there is actually a native Nuxt way of, of doing this um, that just you can you can use a property called pick and just say what strings you want. But in this case, we can kill two birds with one stone and narrow down the actual API response and type it at the same time. Okay. So if you, um, as a second argument to use fetch, pass an object. This is the options object. And in this case, we just want to have a key called transform. Transform is going to take data and it's going to return data. So um, you can take data and uh, say episode dot, uh, I think we are going to want to say, uh, what is it, um, pass, um, I think, yeah, pass, think, pass, uh, yeah, pass, and uh, just pass the data into it. Okay. And I believe this will throw an error uh, if there is any invalid data. Okay. So it's up to you. Um, but yeah, this should work. I think. Okay, it's unhappy, Here and it's go. unhappy because why? Why is it unhappy? Is it unhappy? Just try refreshing the page. It is unhappy. It is unhappy. Oh, it's unhappy because um, it's an array, and we're passing it as a single object. So what we actually want to do is um, uh, we can do z dot array. Uh, z dot if, array. If you do, Z dot array and then stick. Up. Oh yeah we, yeah, we could do it up there as well. So um, and just pass an array. Uh, yeah, Z object that should be fine, right? So we can then pass it as episodes. Okay, so now it's unhappy, but I think it's unhappy. Yeah, okay, it's it was unhappy because right. of the trying to to do the client side refresh, which is fine. But then the upshot of this is it theoretically should have like hugely simplified our object too so now we're sending less data as well so if we look less in here we can see title description and slug and then it goes to the next object so this is good this is great because it means that we are not sending unused data which is going to minimize the payload and and make sure that we're not like like there was that whole controversy about like the social security is in the government website and you can be hacked and it was just that somebody had overfetched data and not filtered it out right I know. Yes, that was that was a really awful thing. It was. Um, it was a good reminder that we uh, we do need to educate really well on what happens when you fetch data in any kind of app builder, and making sure that people understand what becomes public, right? Because it's such an easy thing to do. I if you actually if you hadn't brought it up, I totally would have forgotten and would have fetched all of the data about the episode, despite only using these three these three properties. What really. Um, annoyed me about that was the way the the state responded to the <laughs> reporter who disclosed it even though they had privately contacted the the, the government first before mm -hmm. announcing any kind of story they treated them as a hacker because <laughs> in the html was actually the data anyways i know the the view source is hacking is is well, that was uh, one of my favorite five minutes on twitter was that story cycle yep um, um okay okay so now if I oh. click this uh, up here, I'm going to slash episode slash Nux3 and Nitro, but we have not implemented any routing. So this is just rerouting back to the main page and showing us the same thing that we were seeing before, um, which makes sense. You said that's the default behavior is that app.view handles every request. We have not given it any way of interpreting the, the URL. So it just shows the same data for every single page, which yeah. is... I mean, depending on your outlook, I guess I, I kind of like this as opposed to in, in other frameworks where when you, you haven't implemented routing yet, it just fails. Like it full crashes and then you got to restart your dev server. And, um, th this showing you very clearly that nothing is happening yet, but not crashing your app is kind of nice. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
Okay, so okay, so we, if we head back to the app, we, we need to implement routing. So if we create a, um, oh, but just um, hover over that beautiful episode.title up in the template and you get the, the type, right? So now you Yay. have type support from Zog. Beauty. I love it. Okay, so um, this is actually wonderful. I, uh, I have, I've like put off using Zod for really for no reason whatsoever other than thinking I should probably do an episode on Zod and it's better if I don't know anything. Um, but this is great. <laughs> I, uh, I should really, I should really like use these tools. I'm always like, I'll just write it in vanilla JavaScript. It'll be fine. <laughs> So, okay. yeah, I know, it's beautiful. Um, so the thing we're going to need to do is create a folder called pages. Um, and okay. this is going to implement routing for us. So when Nuxt determines the, um, the, the, uh, that there is a folder and that there's something in it, mm -hmm. uh, we'll probably need an index file. Index.view can be our um, list of episodes. And then uh, the uh, it's complaining because... This is not a valid view file yet. Mm -hmm. So if we create some kind of, um, yeah, that should make it fine. Um, in fact, what we can probably go ahead and do is copy across the contents of app.view into that um, index file. Okay. Probably all, all of it, just okay, copy paste the whole, the whole thing. thing straight up. And, and then we can probably go back to app.view and we delete the script setup. We don't need that now. Okay. And instead, uh, we're going to want to insert a special Nuxt component called Nuxt page. So, um, and it can be a self-closing one. It doesn't, uh, yeah, perfect. So that, if you then uh, hard reload that in the browser, should, yeah, there we go. All right. So it's now, you have clients that are running. And if you click that, you'll get a 404 because there's okay. no route now for it. And so, so this, is, we... this is what you said is the kind of built-in lightweight router. Mm -hmm. We actually had the uh, lightweight router already available to us, even though we didn't use it previously. But okay. now this is view router. This is the full thing. Ah, I understand. Um, okay. So if we go to uh, pages index, uh, sorry, if we, if we create a new folder called episode, if we create a page called episodes slash, um, like uh, it's a folder called episodes and in there we'll create a file um, calls uh, square bracket um, episode or slug, whatever you want, dot view. Uh, and then there'll be another square bracket at the end, yeah. Like this? Yeah, that looks right to me. Okay. Um, I made it into is a, that folder. a folder? Hold, hold please. Uh, we're going to just create a new file. We'll call it slug.view. And uh, oh, hold on. There should, be, there should be a, a context menu option to convert a directory to a file. Oh, that would it be happens a great so idea. And now I can rename this to slug.view, and here we are. Okay, so then in here, if I do a template and uh, to do load episode details, then we won't get a, oh, not yet, not yet. It might take a second, although it did should. I, did I break something? Do I need to stop and restart uh, when we have a dynamic? You shouldn't need to. Um, you shouldn't need to. Uh, if you title. reload the homepage again and try it, try it once more. Okay, let's go homepage. All right, I'm going to hard refresh. And I'm going to click through. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're back. Uh, here, go back one. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and and because I have the core stuff, we're not getting the like client side loading, which is you know that's a whole that's not not to do with Nux, that's to do with my API. Yes, but we can also solve it um, if you, if you want. Let's do it. Okay, um, so we can actually create a Nitro root um, within your project. So we we can do. I mean, obviously. Nitro does support a proxy as well, so we could just um, configure the proxy, but it mm -hmm. might be more interesting to actually create the root. Yeah, let's do it. Uh, just to show off how Nitro works. Um, so uh, if we create a folder called uh, server, uh, and in that folder we create another folder called API, uh, and in that 
folder, we create a file, sorry, called um, whatever you want the endpoint to be named. Um, episodes dot get dot ts. Get dot ts. Oh, yeah, schedule. Yeah, perfect. You don't have to have the method in there, but if you do it, it uh, restricts it to only that method. So it will throw an mm. error if someone tries to post to it. Um, and if you just do export default uh, define event handler, and that should actually be available. Yeah, just autocomplete. Um, and then uh, you just can pass it a, a function, uh, like a, an inline, yeah, perfect arrow function. And if we go to our app dot, or index.view file and take out everything from import Z from Zod, actually almost all of that, you just take it all and paste it into the schedule.get and move stuff around. So we'll move the import up to the top. Probably the episodes is also something that can be removed from the handler itself. Um, and then we'll change the format here slightly. So um, actually we could have gone back to that. Um, we can say const data is await dollar sign fetch and yes, you're right, it should be async. Okay, so we're going to dollar sign fetch. And... That's right. And now we'll have to do that manually. So if we say, yeah, um, and then you could actually just directly return, return episodes past data or something. Okay. or however you prefer. Obviously in real life, we would handle the error of having invalid data, but, um, uh, or, or use safe pass or, or something. But in, I mean, in this case, yeah, that should be fine for now. We could, if we you could go back, it out, was it parse safe was the, that's not it. Uh, safe pass maybe, is it safe pass? Yes, that is what is, is that right? Um, great. And then if you go back to index, um, we can now perform a, we can a, a remove all the stuff from Zod. Uh, uh, and then uh, at the end, we can do const data. Um, sorry, in curly braces again. I wish there was a way of saying that, like, you know, cause you can read code, but I wish there was some kind of, you know, click or something that you could do to communicate that the curly yeah. braces were starting here. Const data. <laughs> um, at, yeah. So to do uh, await use fetch, uh, and now we're going to pass it um, the API root that one API schedule. Look at um, that auto what? complete. We, That's sick. So uh, let's see what's going wrong there because that should be typed. Ah. Uh, oh, oh, it's saying it might be a It's giving us a an uh, if. So does that mean I need to do one of like one of these? I no. think actually we probably we, we should we should probably uh, in this case just revert to pass. Yeah. Um, let's, let's not let's not spend the whole episode fighting with types, and instead we will learn how Nuxt works. Okay, so that's working. It's doing what we want. We're back. Okay. And can I just say we're getting type safety through the server to client boundary, so we're not having to worry about the type really nice for that yeah. mm. okay so that should actually work if we now go mm -hmm. to one of those pages and come back from it because it does, yeah. even though it's on client side um the cause is no longer an issue because we're hitting our own bff Beautiful. Um, so then we would probably want to do the same thing here to add one for the episode data right so if i just do like episode.get.ts yeah or do I need to have oh. a, a variable for the slug? We probably do need the slug, don't we? So if, mm -hmm. if we said episode forward slash, um, uh, I guess, uh, square bracket slug, square, un, end square bracket, um, dot get dot ds, that should do it. Okay. And um, then, and then here we'll have... Copy this because it's going to be almost identical. It just won't be an array. Yeah. And, and obviously, in a, in a real project, we would probably extract the episode thing and have it in a shared folder, sure. et cetera, et cetera. Um, but in this case, we are going to want to get access to that slug. Um, and, and so, episode, um, and then we'd need the the slug. So I'm gonna switch this over to these, and then we want the slug in here, which we need to get access to from where 
So if you type uh, const slug uh, equals... You know, it works. <laughs> uh, get router param, params. Um, and actually, I get, oh, we, we could probably do that. Now, this is expecting something called an event, mm -hmm. which is where all the information about the current request uh, lives. And that is actually the first argument to this function. So if you just receive it in this case, and then pass it through, Oops. ooh, hello, and pass it through there, okay. we now have access to that the slug. Um, and you know, obviously, you might want to do some kind of validation, um, because presumably someone could do all kinds of things by passing. Uh, now, I, I, having said that, yeah, they could probably do. You you wouldn't want an unsafe, random. Um, uh, slug to be added to an API call, I, I guess. But anyway, uh, passing over that, this should work. This should give you an episode. Mm -hmm. And we, yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll, uh, we could do a handful of things here, but the good news would be then if we go into here and grab our data and then we, we want to stick this down here, but instead we're going to do you just going to autocomplete for me? Cause that'd be neat. Um, we're going to do episode slug. Um, do I want to do it like this? And then there's like an options object or do I want to template it out? Just template it out. That should be good. Okay. So we're going to switch this out for a template tag and we'll do slug here. Um, where does one get the slug? Is it the same, same deal? Same kind of thing. So const slug. Except it's not get router params. It's a little bit different okay. uh, because we're now in the view side. But equals use router, uh, and we invoke at dot params. Use router oh, dot uh, params. Exactly. Oh, sorry. Did... Use ru root dot params. Root. Got there it. we go. So that should give us. Uh, I, I'm curious whether this is yeah okay. Now, if you have a look, that is actually typed as well. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful data. So um, we are actually able to do that, even though there is a template literal with the dynamic information there, because mm -hmm. we actually have in TypeScript, we've implemented our own router, which uh, within TypeScript ha actually uh, matches the, the, the template literal that you're passing there with the actual um, array of uh, possible API routes that are coming. That's so, so pleasant. Like that is wonderful. I mean, this is what you've got here is I think what everybody is so excited about with what, uh, Tanner Lindsley just announced for, uh, Tanstack query, which would give this functionality to react. I, I believe, um, really cool stuff, like very, very exciting to see how well this works and just how nice it is. Like, this is lovely <laughs> being able to, to know that if I do a good job of typing my, my data here, that we get more information. Um, and so one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go get us a little bit more information and I'm going to do it the long way because, uh, that way we don't have to like rewrite a bunch of stuff and I'm going to just pull up the episode and this will give us some details. So I want, like, let's get the, I want the image. Is, I, is that shared directly? Do I have to build it? That is not shared directly, any. so we're going to build it. And I'm going to oh. do that by getting the URI. I think and I see a host image and a guest image. So those, that's our headshots, but I actually generate a, like a poster. Um, oh, okay. And so this, we're going to do... Rather than try to figure out how I would transform data in this parse, I'm going to do it over here. Uh, and so what we will do is let's build out, uh, and this will also be good because we're going to introduce an image now. So I'm going to put an image in place. I'm going to do it the way I know how. Um, and so this will be source equals, and then I want my template, and it's going to be um, the uh, data dot image or URI. And then we're going to do poster.jpg. That's how I generate my images. Um, alt will be the data dot uh, title. 
And then down here, we'll do change this one out for the episode title. And let's put the description down here. Uh, data dot description. And it's not happy about something I'm doing. I forgot to finish my template. Okay, what are you unhappy about? The data's here. Uh, it's saying it might be null. That's so, um, which that. you can do a wrap the whole thing. Yeah, well, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah easy enough, right? Um, so we'll get these in here, get you to stop yelling at me. Okay, you're happy. You're happy. So I'm going to close this one. And wait, you why might... did you break? Oh, um, one, one, uh, I know this is, we probably do need to restart the dev server, but before we, um, but while we do that, uh, if we install a um, an, another Nuxt module, um, okay. Nuxt forward slash image dash, dash edge. Image edge? Yes. Okay. The edge thing is it's a pre-release version. Um, oh, at it's edge. The Nuxt... Image at it, it edge? It should actually just should actually just be image dash edge. Oh, oh, okay. All right. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself then. Uh, image edge going again. Why is that not installing? That was my fault. I, I stopped the install oh. and then tried to change the thing. And, um, okay. So now we have image, image dash edge is installed. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, if you refresh the page, it should actually, it should work now. Sorry about that. Did I restart the server? I did. Um, so let's go in here. There's our giant image. Um, but yeah, this is the, the generated images. You can just attach uh, slash poster.jpg to the end of any image on learn with, or any U episode URL on learn with Jason to get an image. Um, I should just put that into the API response. That's very cool. Okay. Um, so, so now we're, we're loading, moment, like it's working. Um, the moment you start doing something like uh, handling images, um, then I would recommend using this next image module that we just installed. Um, and this also will show how to get started with Nuxt modules. So Nuxt modules are little packages that can, uh, sorry, it's image.nuxtjs.org will be the documentation. Image.nuxtjs.org. Um, so this basically will let you do all kinds of things like um, add Cloudinary support for transforming that image that you have. Um, it even ships with its own um, transformer called IPX, which is, can be self-hosted mm -hmm. or can run at generate time. So for example, that is quite a big image, Yes. but if you don't use it, all of that on your page, it would be nice maybe to have some different variants. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is first, if you go to your next config file, which hitherto we haven't touched, um, but we can add a property to it called modules. Uh, that's an array of strings and just add uh, next image edge, just the package name. Um, and that will actually re automatically restart next for us. Um, and, uh, nice. whenever a new module is installed, next will detect its, uh, will basically add its types as well to your environment. So if you were to go, go into your next config again, um, now you'll find that there is a, uh, another property in your next config that you can set called image. Um, and that should be typed based on this image module. Um, in this case, I don't think we'll need to uh, Fascinating. add okay. any con config straight so away. That, but, but... Hold on, because something magical just happened and I feel like you were like, oh, that'll just happen. So because we installed the Nuxt image edge and we've added it to modules, you've extended the types of define Nuxt config to include the options for the module. Yeah. And if you want to see how it happens, you can open the .nuxt folder. The .nuxt folder. And all the magic is in here. And if you go to in the types folder, so most of this is types. It's uh, We have lots of virtual files, but they're kept in memory. Uh -huh. And you look at the schema.d.ts file, you'll see that what we've done there is we actually have added, for every module that's used, we've added its config key and then its types into the next config via an augmentation. 
So that's how you get the access in your Nux config. So you can actually have type safe module options based on the module author's choices. I, I'm not gonna lie, this, this blows my mind. Like, this is incredible because it, it's so, like, when you explain it, this is very obvious, but this is the kind of thoughtful attention to DX that makes something delightful to use. You know, it's just so, so pleasant when you you just open something up and you start building and the thing just happens. That's, oh, it's so nice. It's so nice. Okay, oh, so, that's, that's nice. so we, we aren't gonna need it, but I'm gonna, I just wanna poke in here and see what happens. So we've got the ability to do an alias, Cloudflare, Cloud Image, Cloudinary, Contentful, so you, and then well, look at all of these all providers. Of, this is incredible. So those are the providers that have their own options. Um, gotcha. And you can basically use lots of providers at the same time. You could, in your project, use Cloudinary also, as well as Fastly and ImageKit and oh. whatever. Um, so you might want, therefore, to set um, lots of different um, options, objects, um, and there are other things that you can set too in terms of, uh, so one of the things that will happen uh, is that we, we have some default screen sizes that images are optimized for, and you can set those so you mm -hmm. can configure what those might be. But the defaults are probably good enough. Okay. Um, so we'll, we'll skip, there... skip on configuration and jump right to using it then. So um, one of the, the way that Nux image makes its, uh, um, uh, it makes things available is that it, registers some components for you that you can okay. use. So if you replace image with Nuxt uh, IMG, okay. exactly. So that should just work. Um, so it has its own props. Um, and so there are some additional props, but it, it, it is an image tag. So um, there was, uh, so it, it should be a drop-in replacement, just like Nuxt link renders mm -hmm. an A tag, a Nuxt image will render an image tag. So they, they are meant to be as close as possible to the HTML primitives that we're wanting to work with, um, but also adding functionality that's unique to Nuxt on top of that. So Wonderful. if you go back to, to and there's also another one that you can use called Nuxt Picture, which I actually often turn to um, even more than Nuxt Image, um, because it will basically generate source sets for me. Um, which An image actually, won't it, generate source sets. Actually, I think it, it does. Um, let's if, check. Let, let's have a look at the um, the, the config there. Um, so in that case, let's see what's what's it done. Ah, it's because it's a remote image. So mm. we're normally expecting images to be local, and it's going to do do various things uh, for us there. But I, I think we are. That's just your site, right? There's nothing mm -hmm. in front of it. Yeah. It's ultimately so think, it's think, coming from Cloudinary, but yeah, this is served by my site. If we take your um, your domain, mm -hmm. which is what www. If, if we take that and we go into the Nuxt config, I okay. think we actually should be able to make this work. Now it has been a little while since I've uh, configured this, so I might need to check the docs. But oh yeah, you're already there. So if you just paste it Auto in there, and I to the rescue. Not, honestly, that is one of the best. Uh, I think we won't need the protocol, but I think honestly that is the one of the best things about TypeScript: the idea that you don't need to switch back and forth. Um, from one thing to another thing, um, like in terms of context between docs and code. That you For real, I, can... I, my like nuclear take on TypeScript is that I don't care about it except for autocomplete. Mm. <laughs> like... That's totally, to, that is totally legitimate. Um, I mean, apart from that brief excursion into writing the interface, we've not actually written any TypeScript in mm -hmm. the project so far. We've uh, only benefited it is actually... from it. Yeah. And I, I think that is probably, I think as much as possible, leave TypeScript to library authors. Well, I mean, you might have to do it in your project too, but if it could be left to library authors, um, and actually that means you can then just benefit from it, then I think that is great. Um, yeah. I mean, maybe the that's only not time always that I possible. really write types is if I'm exporting the thing to like, someone will be importing an object or a function or whatever from my code then I will type it. But if it's like an internally used function that will not escape that particular uh, file or whatever, I don't bother. I like, I just, I type everything as any until I'm actually gonna let somebody else use the code. And then I worry about typing because I want them to have autocomplete and warnings and all that good stuff. 
Um, no, exactly. Because, I mean, the, the concept for me for TypeScript is that it's about source of truth mm -hmm. and source of truth flows. So just in this case, we've the moment we have actually validated the input in our server root, we can then have the type flow from there. We shouldn't need to do anything else at this point. And if you've done something like const a equals some kind of string, TypeScript knows it's a string. That, right. that type can flow through your code for you. Um, you shouldn't need to annotate it, right? Um, but enough. Uh, my sort of... So in this case, we can probably, um, probably best practice, we would want to set some sizes for this image. Okay, so let's um, do it. I'm gonna go in here to my image and I'm going to get my sizes. Uh, oh, um, I was thinking height and width, but yes, we can pass oh, sizes oh, height as and well. Width. Yeah, let's do it. So, so let me tell you what I would usually do, and then you tell me if this is something mm -hmm. that I have to accommodate for in Nuxt, or if this is something that uh, will kind of get automatically handled. So what I would typically do in this point is I would start putting together some style, which if I remember correctly, I just put a style tag together and then I would say image and max width of, I don't know, 500 pixels or something. And that would control the width of my image. Now this didn't change the size. So my expectation would be that if I wanted this to have a source set, I would either need to provide the source set myself or I would have like a, you know, add, you know, max width or something, and then let the image component uh, auto determine what the right breakpoints were for like, you know, single, single pixel density, high density, et cetera. Yeah. So that there are a couple of things that you can do. Um, so, uh, okay. First thing, your style block is great. Um, but if you add the attribute scoped to it, then it won't apply this to every image in your website, but just to this um, page. I do love that. Um, so, okay, so yeah, you're totally on board, I, I forget, yeah. So um, the second thing is, um, just let me show you what Nuxt Picture will do out of the box without any more configuration, and then we'll sh explore how to make this happen with Nuxt Image. So yeah, just drop in Nuxt Picture, save it, um, and what you should see now, well, this isn't targeting it because it's not an image, right, so it's a picture, but you should see that we have masses of source data being made available to us. Um, and so if we targeted that with picture, then we should, also see that, uh, hopefully that's, why is that not? Oh, maybe I, picture max width, maybe you can't style picture that way. Yeah, cause it says it, it, it's like being picked up, but it's not. It's, it's applying it, but it's not actually um, the right size because the, there is the image within it. Is there magic or something? I don't know. Yeah, I, <laughs> maybe it's falling back to the, great. Well, if it was falling back to the image, that would work too. So what are you seeing? Does it need to be source? This. Let's try the source. The mysteries. The mysteries. It's not. It's uh, CSS is is mastering us at this point. <laughs> uh. um, yeah. So whatever we're doing, it's weird. Um, if <laughs> I. Oh, no. It's something to do with the. Maybe they can't have data attributes or something. Or like CSS ignores the data attributes on them. That was weird. Okay, let me try go, again. Go back. What did you get rid of? I got rid of the scoped, and it worked. Ah. Oh. Okay. Well, hey, bug. maybe that's a what bug, it is. Everyone, a bug. <laughs> um, yeah. No, this is this is fine. This is totally fine because we know how to work it. So, um, what I can probably do to get away from this then is I can like. Yeah add a class of uh, image. And then instead and of one of these, we'll do one of these and it's still doesn't um, It like won't us. yet work because um, it's it's expecting a variable called image. If we just remove that binding oh, right. uh, in front of class, of that okay, should so now, now work. Oh, so we do, have the, we do have the, um, the thing here, but it doesn't wanna work if I add a new one for it's, it's still the scoped thing, I think. The issue is that the, um, and this, I think, I would have to investigate if this is a view bug. Um, but it yeah. seems to be that basically the contents of this uh, picture are not scoped properly. Um, so if we, we remove that scoped attribute, which we can do now that we have a class. I have a, I have a, 
a you have an idea. Theory. I have a theory. I don't get it. I don't get why it's doing it. I think the source is not isn't scoped. Can I just escape? Nah, I don't know what's going on. Okay, so we know that this works though. So I'm just gonna just gonna shimmy on down to this because that's gonna let us what? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> what is what is happening? This is uh how, how did we how did we get here? I think what is max fit. Ma we wanted max fit to be set to all of those. <laughs> I think that that definitely worked at some point in time. <laughs> Honestly, I'm building a project. It, utterly like, befuddled so much... right now. What is happening? Oh, max with 100%. We want max with 500. Okay. So, some... Okay, we're... we're... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened, but we're okay now. We, we've got our images, and we have a source set, and it's it's doing the thing, um, and it looks like it's got a max width ranging from 320 up to about triple pixel density, density which is good. Um, yeah. Now... So Nux Picture does this where you out of, the, out of the box. You don't have to give it any information. Um, okay. But it, it, Next Image can do this too. Okay. So if we change it through to Next Image and now pass sizes, um, just as you were going to do previously, and actually say, in this case, um, what, we, what we want, uh, this can be a string um, here. Uh, we're going to pass it a, a string of uh, basically what, what we want the... Um, I think in this case, we'll just say 500 pixels. So we would get like 500 double pixel density and oh. triple, or is it different? Let's see. Uh, I think we basically want to, so uh, we, we can set different sizes for different breakpoints. So in this oh. case, um, if we just, so if, if basically what we want to do is um, when it's small, it's the width of the page, you do SM, colon 100 VW, um, and then uh, okay. so SM colon 100 VW, uh, space, uh, no, no comma, just, sorry, this is a sort of custom Nux thing, and then okay. MD colon 500 PX. Okay. And that, I think, should, my memory is correct, should do what we want. So it's, it's presented, it's now given us oh, a to... source set there. Do I need, uh, will it, I don't does that think mean that it's is... going to do the thing here if I? Is it? I, I would be surprised if that Wait. changes the. Why, why are you breaking now? What is what breaking? What happened? Did we, oh, we got an error. Oh. What is our error? Uh, unknown word? What? Don't be, that don't be strange. weird. Don't be weird. It, it is being weird. Did we delete a, a style block entirely? Yes. Uh, this is a, um, a Nuxt plus Vite bug. And actually, I'm not entirely sure whose bug it, it is. Um, but when you delete a style block, you will get this. Um, it's very odd. OK. So we've okay. deleted the block. And now we have our image source is set up. It's got the sizes. It's got its max width set up. Uh, the image does not have any style applied to it. And as we go here, it uh, we don't we haven't like controlled for margins on the defaults of the page, so we get a little bit of, of side scroll. But you can see that it's it is resizing to keep up with 100% um, until we hit a certain point, at which point it snaps to 500. So now, great, I... and it's doing all that without any styles applied. We just kind of told it what to do here. That's just the browser doing it, just to be clear. So the, the, it, the browser is doing that with the source set. Um, oh, cool. I would, by the way, always recommend uh, adding height, explicit height and width, because they won't change the, I think, the size that it's, in most cases, if you have CSS, the height and width won't change the size, but they will give aspect ratio information to the browser, which will help reduce uh, CLS. Got it. So, What's our full um, size and in this. Aspect ratio okay. is 500 by 281. So we can just exactly set those. 500 height is 
281. And now it reserves the space for us so we don't get any layout shift. That's, yeah, good, good call. Good tip. Um, so, but the sizes thing is what's going to do, do it for you in, in Nuxt image. So that's going to tell you what things to generate. If you do Nuxt Great. picture, it will basically generate everything um, for the, the uh, d depending on how it's being used. Yeah. Um, but, so, uh, but yes. Daniel, I just realized we are over time. So I got to wrap us oh. up here. Um, this has been so much fun. We were able to get quite a bit done here. So we got our first Nuxt project set up. We got the, the page router going in our uh, pages folder. We set up the ability to load data. Um, we used the Nitro server to set up some API endpoints. Um, we use Zod to validate that data, which was a nice little bonus. We've got dynamic routing using the square bracket slug. And then we set up images to, uh, to kind of auto optimize our images. I feel like we barely scratched the surface, but this was already just so incredible. A lot of good things happened in here. Um, Daniel, where else should people go if they want to learn more? Um, so, well, definitely join the Nuxt Discord server. It's a great, um, great place to ask any questions you might have. Feel free to get in touch with That's me there okay. or on, um, or on Twitter or Mastodon if, if DMs are um, a helpful way to, to handle uh, anything. Okay. Um, Nuxt.com is, is a wealth of information. There's lots of stuff there. Um, and I think that there are lots of, there are lots of uh, videos and talks and things that might be useful. I have got some on my website, um, but yeah. Excellent. All right. So this episode, like every episode, has been uh, live captioned. We've had Maggie with us today. Thank you so much, Maggie. Uh, that is from White Coat Captioning. And our sponsors are Netlify, NX, New Relic, and Brand New Plural Site. Thank you all so much for making the show more accessible to more people. Make sure you go keep an eye on the schedule. Subscribe on YouTube, Twitch, uh, the newsletter on, on learnwithjason.dev, wherever it is that you get your information to make sure you keep up on new episodes as they come available. Thank you all so much for hanging out with us today. Daniel, thanks so much for taking some time to teach us about Nuxt. We will see you all next time.